بعد هي شوي عادي رحمة دار محاس هاي الحري ركبي من ركبت هي به عمري سبعين عيون به كيلو من الحر هي به يعني كين شان الهوتي بكيلو من دعاك إني إنسان يقاطع الهوتي ب ب ب مقر السفر كيس دعاك إني إنسان سفر ك بعد يلوم كعريت بعد يلوم كإنجليزي بس زحم كده بون غيره بس الحر هو القادي كين إلا بدعاك بدعاك الإش به هي ذن شوي بنعصن هي بون هي بك بسألت ب بك شوك بشيني الحمد لله شيء ثلاثيني ب ب بثروت غيونتي Yeah. I own cows. My family is um, from the countryside and they own cows a long time ago. No more this time. And um, uh, I am from the Shahra tribes, the original people of this country. I am about 70 years old. And um, I did my military academy in England. I was a captain in the armored car regiment in the Trojan Man Scouts in Sharjah, the Emirates. And um, I did my university in history. And uh, this is my background. Well, you see, I believe even from my, uh, uh, you know, the beginning of my age, that this country is a very important country in the history of the Arabia because this is the land of Lahqaf and this is the land of the people of Ad, which is the original land of the, all the Arabs came from this area. And now the middle of this area is called the Balad Shahar. And the land of Shahar, uh, related to a person called Shahri, is the forefather of the people of Shahar people. And uh, the Shahra called themselves and their language and their area after their forefather. So uh, I believe that this is a very important history, I mean, uh, country. Uh, through the ancient history. So I thought I have to look for this history or the history of this area because I believe that the, all the Arabs they have their own civilizations and they have their own culture and writings and everything and when I read the uh, the Sepayan writings and the uh, uh, the Hemiric writings I thought maybe we have the same writings and related to these people. But later on, we thought, I thought this is a unique area and it has a very ancient language and must have their own culture. Well, you see, the Shahri language is a very ancient Arab language and the most ancient Arab or Semitic, as they call it language still exists in the world. This is a very important language. We need to preserve it. We need to record about it. We need to uh, ask the elders, the people about the ancient ni names and the ancient words. And we are trying because the new generation is not interested anymore in this language and because the elders are uh, passing away they uh, I mean the words will go with them and the names the ancient names will go with them and uh, the writings which we found in here which has not been deciphered yet uh, must have written by the Shahri language which is the most ancient language here and the Shahri names and the words. If we didn't record these, then the Shahri, the Shahri will not, uh, the, the writing will not be able to decipher. So the new generations are very, I mean, not interested, the old one vanishing, and we're trying to 
record as much as we can from these inch, I mean, older people. So I'm afraid that the language will go when those older people gone. Well, I think there are some people now, even younger generations, feel that this language has to be looked after at least for some time or to be uh, taught in an institute or in uh, the, the university or somewhere in the country. So they think if we open an institute for it or uh, you know any study for it we will be able to preserve and keep the language because many people they wanted to learn it even younger people even uh, locals and they wanted to learn it in uh, the way the, the, the you know the cultural way you know like grammars and they know they, they wanted to know everything about it and even to keep the ancient names of the land, of the people, of the uh, areas, uh, mm, you know, all the names, stars and everything, to keep them in, in, in their mind. And this is one of the hopes, you know. Well, there are some other people trying to record the language and to pronounce the words and keep some words and names and everything. And um, this is, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of, uh, you know, encourage, the encouraging things that uh, the people doing. But the, the, unfortunately, they are not doing it on the scientific way, <coughs> you know, to keep uh, the letters to organize, to, to uh, recognize the letters, to put them like, you know, the, the scholars, they have their own letters, which is, they call it the IPA system. And um, now we're trying, and many people, they're trying to put some letters for this language in the computer, so we can uh, type it and, uh, you know, recognize it. And this is, yeah, some people still, I mean, now started to recording the language. <clears throat> well, I don't know about many people or some people they have recorded something and they, they have written some books about the vocabulary in, in, uh, uh, in their own way. But unfortunately, as I said before, you can't, you can't read them unless you re-type uh, them again. What I'm doing <coughs> is uh, because the writings that we have found has not been deciphered and because the culture of this country uh, is a very important and all the scholars think this la these uh, writings is belongs to the Shahri language and everyone said, you are the person for me, you are the person who can decipher this language. So I thought if I stay years and years trying to decipher the language, maybe I will not be able to succeed. So by that time, I will lose time and lose a lots of words from the elders. So I recorded a lot of uh, 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 vocabularies and the lots of names. So I have nine books about the Shahri language to print in addition to two books already has been printed. Those nine books about the Shahri language, but it is about the grammar, about the vocabulary, about how to learn the Shahri language in three languages, Shahri Arabic and Shahri English. And also some names of almost, you know, many things about the country, uh, places, stars, uh, animals, and you know, lots of things. So this is the important, and uh, I think uh, what I've done is uh, more useful than trying to decipher the language.
Well, the problem is, you know, this time the people, they don't need this language anymore. If they cannot work with it, they cannot teach it, they cannot, uh, nobody is expect, accepting, accepting, accepting this language anymore. So it's not the language for work or for any, anything, only the language for the scholars to study. So the generations, they said, why should bother about the language? We have Arabic language and we have English language and we can work and get uh, jobs on this language. And also our religion is in this language, in, in the Arabic language. So it's not that you know, important anymore. Well, if we still preserve this language, from this language, 60% now, I think within, within 20 years time, I think only about 10% will remain there. That's, you know, I hope it will not, but this is what I th think. Because the people, uh, 70, to, not the 70, eight, more than 80% now, they don't pronounce even the Shahri letters. Then they don't know how to pronounce it. They pronounce it in a different pronunciation. Of course, they know the language, but they don't speak it fluently, like uh, it's a slang language in their uh, tongues. So they don't pronounce those letters unless they pronounce the Shahri letters, which is pronounced in Shahri language. Nobody will understand what you're saying because the pronunciation gives you the meaning of the letter and uh, the word, and that's it. Not, not yet, because I have not, nobody has worked on it and, you know, somebody else than me. And I am not uh, working on it. Even the language, the same letters and the same writings in Colorado, nobody is trying to decipher that language because they said, this is your language, this is your letters. And once you decipher your language, it means the Colorado ones will be deciphered immediately. And um, I am trying, now I have those books ready, I have a lot of uh, things has been recorded ready, and I'm trying, I will try uh, next year to give at least four to five months only to decipher the language. So I will lose five months to decipher the language, I mean the, the letters. I hope I will you know, succeed, but anyhow, I don't know. Well, the Americans, they found writings in Colorado, Oklahoma, and New Mexico, and they call it the uh, Old World Writings which means from Arabia areas. And those are, you know, like our Sabaeans and uh, Thamodic and all these things. They said this is a Thamodic writings, but because the similarity of the, the, their inscriptions and the Thamodic inscriptions, but in the Thamodic inscriptions, 28 letters. In Colorado letters, 38, uh, 33 letters. And when they saw my books, they found the same letters, the number, 33 letters, the same shape and the same way that they write it down. I mean, they write it. So they said, no, 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 we were wrong. It is not from Thamodic inscriptions. It is from Tofar inscriptions. And they think it is the uh, Shahri, uh, one of the Shahri alphabet uh, system. And uh, we wrote an article, I wrote with the, the uh, experts in America an article about those. And then after 10 years, the scientists agreed that those writings came from Tofar and this is one of the Shahri alphabets. Good, there is, uh, uh, there is a, uh, a proverb in Shahri language, 
uh, about a snake, a huge snake. The proverb in Shahri, we say, Her hot ksfot, yhabisat remnum. Means if the snake uh, uh, wanted to, you know, to, to, to eat everything or to, 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 to destroy everything, the god throws it into the sea. So I ask it why they say this. They say there is a story. Uh, the story of the snake is a big snake. We have three main things which is existed all over the world. A, a huge snake, a huge bird, and a huge joint person. And those huge things existed in Dofar in our stories. And they say it is in Dofar. One of those is the snake. So there is a story from a man said he was coming from the, the city going to the countryside at night. And if he, when he became under a high mountain, he saw a light coming on the road. So he stopped there. And then the light passed him. There was a big snake and a man is on the neck of the snake with a light, big light. And the man asked the man on the snake, he said, who are you? And he said, I'm, uh, 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 what do you call him, uh, an angel. I'm an angel. And he said, why are you standing there? And why the snake, are you guiding this snake? And he said, this snake wanted to eat the people, wanted to destroy everyone. And the God ordered me to throw it into the sea. So he, stand, he said, don't go, the, the, the angel said, just wait there until the snake finished. So the man passed on the neck. And then after about uh, another half an hour, and the snake is flu I mean, moving, another angel came in the middle of the snake with the light. He told him the same story. And then he waited, and then another angel came on the backside of the snake with the same story. So when the, pig, the snake passed away, he went. He, he walked up to the mountains where he wanted to go. This is one of the stories. Well, we have, you know, in a joint person, for instance, it's a story. I asked the Shahra people who are living in uh, Al-Halaniyat or uh, Korea Moria Islands. And they have a story of a giant Shahri person. His name is uh, Sanaq bin Anaq, and sometimes they call him Marzuq. And the story of this man, they said he's a Shahri, he's from that island, and he can walk in the ocean walking. And then you take this, the, uh, uh, the fish and uh, burn it by the sun, close to the sun, and um, eat it. Uh, and so he's very high, you know, he's very uh, tall, as tall as the mountains. And he said, I mean, they said, when before he died, a few days before he died, he threw a big net. Uh, uh, of, uh, you know, sea, uh, uh, I mean, the fish net. And it was about one kilometer long, that net. And when he died, they couldn't find a place for him to bury him. So they cut him into pieces and put a big graveyard for him. This graveyard still called after his name. Well, the Shahar people are Arabs, races, all the Arabs, we believe, the Shahra people believes that the Shahra and all the Arabs are the people of Ad, who came, Ad is, the, uh, as the, uh, the Quran said, 
وجعلناكم خلفاء من بعد نوح for the people of Ad and the people of Ad in Al Aqaf. Al Aqaf is from Hadramaut eastwards to Ras Al Had, and some people they said even to the Arabian Gulf. The middle of Al Aqaf is Bilad Shahar, which is where we are now in Tawfar, the Shahra, people call themselves after their father, Shahri. So Shahr ibn Shaddad ibn Ad. So the Arabs uh, created their civilization here thousands of years ago. And then after, when they became bigger and stronger, they spread all over Arabia and they formed their own kingdoms and their own civilization everywhere. The remaining people, the original people who remained in here are the Shahra people and the Mahra people because they're all from the, the same origin. So the Shahra people considered the most ancient Arab races still existed in the most ancient Arab land in this land. Well, first book is called كيف ابتدينا وكيف ارتقينا بالحضارة الإنسانية من شبه الجزيرة العربية ضفار كتابات هوا نقوش القديم. It means we how we created, begin and created uh, the human ra uh, the human civilization from Arabian uh, uh, you know peninsula. The far its ancient inscriptions and writings. This is published in uh, in uh, nineteen ninety four and nineteen ninety four. Yeah, and the other one is the language of Ad in two thousand. About the uh, those the first one is Arabic and Shahri in, in Shahri and Arabic. The second one in, in, in Arabic, Shahri, and uh, uh, English, Shahri, also. It's about the folklores and proverbs and uh, the, uh, the Shahra people and their tribes and their divisions of the land and uh, their names and, and, and everything. So in both, I mean, Arabic and in, in English. So these two books. And the other books, which is now uh, ready to be printed, hopefully the government well, print them. It's nine books ready. Two books, uh, one book is about how to learn Shahri language. It's in uh, uh, three languages, Shahri in Arabic and Shahri in English. The other one is about folklores and, and proverbs in addition to what I have written already in three languages. And uh, these are four books, three uh, uh, dictionaries about the, the Shahri words and one about the Shahri grammar in Arabic and Shahri, and the other one is about the uh, uh, handcrafts in three languages. I hope somebody will rent them for me. All right. Hey, show you Ali Rahmat Dar Mahas, Al Hari, Al Kibi. من ركبت هي بهي عمري سبعين عيون بهي كيلو من الحر هي بهي يعني كين شان الهوتي بكيلو دعك إني إنسان يقاطع الهوتي ب ب ب مقر سفرك هسه دعك إني إنسان سفرك بعد يلوم كعريت بعد يلوم كإنجليزي بس زحم كده بون غيره بس الحريه والغد كين يلا بدعوك بدعوك ليش؟ بهي ذن شوي بنعظن هي بون هي بك بسألت ببك شوك بشيني الحمد لله شيء ثلاثة تيني ب بثروتها وانتي